Hi guys, welcome to another video from Paul here at CCTV Systems UK. Um, we're going to do another video today on these DVRs here, which are the High Vision AccuSense DVRs. Now, we've had lots and lots of messages through our CCTV Systems UK Facebook page, which is brilliant. It's our preferred medium if you want to get a hold of us. Remember, YouTube notifications can be few and far between. Sometimes we get notifications, uh, sometimes we just don't. It's as simple as that. So if you, if you send us a message through our Facebook page, there's usually a link uh, at the bottom of the description. We'll do our best to uh, get back to you. Remember, we are installers after all. You know, this is a business that's been running for a long time, so we're always busy. But, AccuSense DVRs, why are we getting so many messages? Well, it's because these DVRs are clearly replacing all the standard ones and there's nothing wrong with them, so let's just say that first off. It's because they've got so much more built into them and people are struggling to understand one of the main features, which is that now AccuSense DVRs, which this is the second generation of, which is a real step forward, have target detection built into them, which means you can select human or vehicle or both. Now then, to make it a little bit more complicated, you can use that target detection, human, vehicle or both. I'll just talk about humans today because clearly you're not going to get a vehicle into my back garden or my grass or I'm going to be kicking somebody's backside. But I could activate human detection if I find so wished on motion detection mode, intrusion detection mode or line crossing detection mode. But I can't have them on at the same time. It's got to be on one channel only. So motion detection, intrusion detection, or line crossing detection. Now then, so how do we get the best from these DVRs? Well, one of the messages we got was from somebody who's bought one of these DVRs, but only has a small hard drive. Um, they've got an eight way, and they've got a one terabyte hard drive. Now, one terabyte hard drive is fine in a four-way machine, but it's a little bit small for an eight-way. So what I'd suggest, and what I'm going to try and show you today, is what, what we would do in that situation, which is to set motion sensor recording up, to unclick the um, target detection, which is going to be humans for us, in that motion detection page, but I'm then going to set up an intrusion detection zone so you get the best of both worlds. Now, one thing that's really, really important with this video, I know it's probably going to take more than 20 minutes, and I don't want to be on my soapbox, but there is a specific way to do this, and it's going to become really, really clear why um, DVRs are set a certain way when they come from the factory, of course. And because this DVR has just been networked, um, and literally I've set the time on it, I've just connected it to my phone as well, obviously it's networked, um, I can show you in which order to tick things and to untick them, uh, and why. And I'll give you a quick brief um, summing up of that every time I do something like that. So it'll be a long video, but I assure you it'll be worth it. Give us some feedback on it and see if... I've done it right, you know, I'm an engineer, I've been an AV engineer since I had baby teeth, but I'm not the best video maker in the world. But here we go, let's, let, let's try and get this right for you. So, let's set up the motion detection first, and there's two parts to this, the first part's simple. Let's start with that first. So we right click, there's two icons at the top that we're going to use, one's called system, which is a cog, and one's basically, looks a bit like a battery. Um, obviously it says storage at the side of it. Let's do that first, because once we've done this, we won't be into the storage one again. So left click on storage. A1 is analog one. This is a 16 channel DVR, so it'll take 16 cameras and uh, it can be expanded to 18, because it will take two IP cameras. It's the two MP version. The schedule is enabled, it's ticked, that's standard of course, like I said, factory settings, but it's set in blue, which is continuous. So what we're going to do is left click on the green square there, 
left click in this top left hand corner and keep our finger pressed down and we're going to drag all the way across i'll do it slowly so you can see it on these vids let go and press apply that's it motion detection has been set 24 hours a day you could of course click continuous you know and drawn from six till six o'clock if you want and done that blue again with the procedure that i've just used pressing your finger down so there's no problem for this video all motion all the way so that's it done with that so then we go up to system which is the cog and then left click at the side of the screen here on the left where it says live view sorry event so motion detection okay a1 is channel one and it's enabled there is a blue square all the way around this particular screen here and it says hashtag one hashtag so that means all of this area in this square is fair game for motion detection now we don't want that and remember the previous models used to have squares okay so in my garden here and i've got some bushes that go very big in summer i've got some lovely flowers on them but they blow around something alarming and we don't want those to be setting the recording off so back then we used to take the squares out and then click the apply button which would be in blue this is different now i've mentioned what it does but we're going to tackle this afterwards there's things we need to do first remember what i told you about the order of this video so let's look here first sensitivity zero to 100 in increments of 20 you can have it as 0 20 40 60 80 100 100 being the most sensitive false alarm filter it won't let me tick that it's shaded why the camera that's outside is a camera that's been on test it's a high vision color view camera 5 million megapixel with a wide angle lens and it is the first of the poc compatible powered over coax uh color views but it will run on standard DVRs as well, hence the reason why it's working on this AccuSense. So, set at 80%. False alarm filter. It doesn't have a PIR on it, which I've just explained because it's uh, one of the new POCs. Vehicle and human target detection, they're both ticked. So, what I'm going to do is click that down to 40%, which is more than enough sensitivity for this garden certainly in daytime unclick vehicle and human and then i'm going to press copy to now i'm going to do this in this order so it doesn't give you the hump later on a1 is channel one which is shaded because i'm on there and then of course it goes all the way to a16 a just means analog so analog one to 16 which is all my 16 channels and it says analog in the left corner if i click that it ticks them all press OK and then press apply now the reason I've done that is not particularly for the sensitivity I could have left that where it was but I wanted the target detection which was set as standard with human and vehicle I wanted it off on all six channels because you can put four intrusion sets of squares on on a DVR whether the DVRs are four eight or a 16 it will take four intrusion detections and what I don't want is the computer warning us that we've got to take it off this motion when we're using intrusion that's the reason why i've done it number two again this seems a little bit of a strange way to do it but it's accurate believe me if you go into the linkage setting audible warning is also set as standard on these dvrs and what that would mean is the audible warning will mean the dvr will bleep every time there was movement on 16 channels believe me it would never stop bleeping so all i'm going to do is untick that press copy to click analog again in the left corner it activates them all press ok and press apply so that way we've not got a load of bleeping going off the schedule just coincidentally at the left hand side of that where the linkage is is all blue of course continuous and let's go back to the area right so remember that tackle this first the sensitivity and the human and vehicle then go to the linkage because that's how the set are standard remember i've not messed with this machine these are factory settings and i've unclipped the um audible warning copied it to all the cameras now i can now mess with this square 
get rid of it and turn it into an area that I want because I'm never going to be copying to again. I don't want to set a scene up here and then press copy to all the other uh, channels that are on there because, of course, they won't fit. They're all looking at different scenes. And that's why I did it this particular way. So, press clear. Press apply. The square's gone. Hashtag one hashtag that was in the centre, the little mark there, has gone. Okay? So, we're now going to draw an area. Now, remember, this used to be lots of squares and you could sort of scribble them out the way you wanted to. Now we can put dots down, and it's like dot to dot. Every time we put a dot down, the DVR uh, joins them up. And I'll exaggerate these dots. You've got 10 in total that you can use on the motion detection. And obviously, one, once you put the 10th dot down, it will automatically uh, draw a line between the 10th dot and your very first dot. Now, I'm going to exaggerate these lines. I'm going to do it like that so you can see these as they're going on. I'm going to keep these bushes out of the way because I don't want those to be uh, setting the... Uh, motion detection recording off so I'll put one dot there you see the line two three four I think you've got the hang of that five six seven eight nine and I'll drop that back down there ten and apply as you can see when I put the tenth one down it joined it to number one Hashtag one hashtag has come up, which means it's ready. So that is now set for motion sensor recording. Okay? Ready to rock and roll. Now then, once we've set this, and let, let's go back over it again, just to be sure, 40%, no vehicle, no human, unclick the linkage, and obviously made sure it's applied, and then I've done this square here. So that's ready. That's my um, motion sensor ready to go. So what I want to do now is go to Smart Event. And on here we've got face detection, line crossing, intrusion detection, audio exception. That's if your cameras are AOC, um, audio over coax, which the first and second generation, oh no, certainly the second generation are audio over coax. So it, it listens for loud noises and sudden scene change which is obviously people moving the cameras around or throwing something over them. None of these are activated. We want intrusion. Let's enable and apply. Now, the reason we've done that is it's not set as standard like the motion detection. So we're going to do this any way that we want now. It was really important with the motion detection because we were drawing... Um, an area that we didn't want to go on to all the other 15 cameras so draw an area we've got four dots I'm not going to make this a big deal I'm just going to draw a really weird shape I'll put one dot on the grass there two three and four there you go and press apply now I know there's only four dots there as opposed to ten but remember we're going to be clicking human detection now on this because this is the intrusion side. You could put a dot in each corner and have it the full screen if you so wish to. That's a funky shape. In fact, I think when I was a kid, I used to draw wheels and things like that and a couple of windows here and pretend that it was a car. But it's done. We've drawn that. We've enabled it. We've applied it. The only thing you need to look at now on this particular page is time threshold, which is 0 to 2. And that's the amount of seconds somebody has got to be in that space there that we've drawn. So I usually have it set as zero if it's a small area. If it's out into a bigger area and there's a lot of wind and rain and things like that, I'll tend to have it on one or two seconds. That cuts down on your false alarms. The sensitivity is set at 50% standard. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to set it at 70 and then I'm going to click human and apply. So there we go. It's enabled. I've drawn the box. Applied it. Left it at zero because that's all I need for the time threshold. Up the sensitivity to 70%. Remember, night vision, really, you want about another... I put another five on it, maybe another ten. If you've got a colour view that's looking into a really big area, you might have to go as high as 90 or maybe even a little bit more. 
uh, and then obviously the human has been activated. Now, last bit, arming schedule, continuous in blue, just like we left the motion detection, but the linkage. On the motion, audible warning was activated as standard on all 16 cameras, and we untipped it. Now, for intrusion detection that we've had to activate, it's now Notify Surveillance Centre, and that, of course, is the push notification through to your mobile phone with a pretty picture and a video showing you who is on your property. But for this video, I'm also going to activate the audible warning and press apply. Why? Because you'll be able to hear the DVR here that's right in front of the camera. So you'll know when this bleeps, it's seen a human and it's sent me a notification at the same time. So there you go. That's now set. Let's go through this. Storage. There you are. Motion, all in green. System. Event. Channel number one, it's enabled. We've got the area that we want here. It's at 40%. Actually, it's just started raining. So what I'll do is I'll put it down to 20 because the recording lights on it is actually starting to get quite heavy out there, I've got to say. Um, set it at 20. Human and vehicle. We've taken off because we've used that target detection on the same screen, but for intrusion and the linkage, we'd also taken the uh, audible warning off. And then we altered this last, of course, remember. We don't want the shape on all the other cameras. Event. Third one along, intrusion detection. Enabled. Drawn our area. Applied it. Left the uh, threshold at zero. Sensitivity at 70, and I've clicked humans. In the linkage settings, it was already set as Notify Surveillance Center, and I've put the bleeper on so that you can hear it as well. So there we go. How do we test this? If click Live View, and right click on this border, it disappears. Like I say, it started raining very, very heavily, and that's why the sign is still on there. Normally it wouldn't be recording. So what I'm going to do is, I've got a a piece of white trunking here, the type of thing that we use indoors. It's just over three foot high, and I'm going to do something very unscientific. I'm just going to wave it out the door, and you will see the motion detection light come on, and you know then that it's working. Here we go. There you go, the motion bell has come on. Now, usually that goes off after a couple of seconds and the recording light would go off straight after that. But because it's raining so heavily, I know you can't see. Oh, it has gone off now because we've set it at 20. It is raining quite heavily now. Uh, that's why the red light was on originally. So no bleep, no notification, and it's recording. Again, once more, while that red light's off. There you go. So, we've now got motion sensor recording working, no notifications or bleeping or anything like that to upset us, but that gives us a lot of recording space. Because it's idle, while there's no motion, your hard drive will last much, much longer. So, what's left to do now? Well, we did put intrusion detection on, and we've set it for humans, so let's give it a try. I'm going to walk outside there now. You should get a bleep from the DVR. And you might be able to hear my mobile phone in the background. I'm not sure if it's on silent. But it will send a notification at the same time as it bleeps when it sees a human. So I'm going to be the guinea pig and go outside and do that for you now. As you can see didn't get very far because it's quite sensitive and I had the time threshold at zero so it basically as soon as I came away from the wall it's picked me up and not only have we got the bleep we've also got a notification through to my mobile phone now I'm going to try and bring this up to you it'll be difficult but I'll have a go it's up in the top left hand corner if I drag the screen down it does actually say camera one intrusion detection it's got the time and date on there and if i click into it 
there's a picture of myself as I came away from the wall and the wall through the door. You can click to live view to watch it now. You can click on the picture itself just to have a look at it and see who it is. Or you can press playback. I'll do that and bring the camera up onto its side. And there you go. A video of that handsome fella there with the bald head. Voila. And that is how you get the best out of an AccuSense DVR. So, I hope this video has been um, informative to you. Two things I want to show you before I go. Again, just to remind you about how to do it and in what order to do it. Firstly, if I right-click, hit System and Event again, I'm back into Motion Detection with that funky area that we drew in the first place. If I try now to click the human and press apply, a warning comes upon the screen. Okay, and the warning says, please turn off the line crossing detection slash intrusion detection slash scene change of A1, which is analog one, camera one, and try again. So I'll just press OK and unclick it. The reason for that is, I put it on on intrusion. Remember, I unclicked it off the motion so I could use it in intrusion. You cannot have it on on the different channel modes for that one particular picture. And I think that's where a lot of people are struggling. And two, remember, we also changed the sensitivity on the motion first and undid the linkage for the audible warning. Why? We don't want this shape being used on the other 15 channels because this is a 16 way and if I click up here press camera 2 the original square is around the um, picture as you can see and it still says hashtag 1 so we've not superimposed what we need on camera 1 onto something that we clearly don't need on camera 3 and camera 7 let's say and that's why it's really really important to do it this way I know it's a faff, but it works. Trust me, we've been doing this a long, long time. So if I nip back onto Live View and right-click on the border, voila, we're done. Again, I know it's been a long video. I imagine it's, it's well past 20 minutes now, but I think it's been worth it. It really does justify sitting for 20 minutes or so because this will save you a lot of aggro. These AccuSense DVRs are going nowhere in fact i suspect that in the next few months all the poc the power over com uh, over coax compatible uh, dvrs will also be accusense might take a little while for the older stock to get used up in the uk but it's in the post i think we all know that so there you go that's another video on accusense high vision dvrs um, how to get the best out of them how to set them up nice and simply just remember, press the apply button every time you change something and don't be afraid to mess with the sensitivity and the time thresholds and things like that because you won't hurt the DVR. As long as we press apply afterwards, you'll always be okay. But remember not to have the target detection, which is human and vehicle. And of course, you can have both going at the same time but you can't have them on different channel modes. So if you've got them on motion detection, you can't have them on intrusion or line crossing and vice versa. So that's it. Really good video and it's been a long time coming. But anyway, I'm off for a cup of tea now because I think I've just about had enough videos too. This is Paul logging off at CCTV Systems UK. If you want to get a hold of us, Please do follow the link through to our Facebook page. I'll, I do try now to put it in the bottom of the descriptions. And the reason for that is Facebook notifications are few and far between. Sometimes we get a notification when people comment or ask a question straight away. Sometimes it can be two days afterwards. Sometimes it doesn't come through at all. But of course, a message on Facebook is something that we can always check on. CCTV Systems UK. I'll put the link in the description. So guys, stay out of trouble, stay safe. This is Paul logging off at CCTV Systems UK. Bye bye now.